All right. Today is Thursday, the 4th of May. Welcome to another economic discussion. Folks, I got a good one for you tonight, and I hope that you caught up with my uh, FOMC review video last night where Jerome Powell did a comedy stand-up routine, and my favorite line, the funniest one by far, is this one. Take a look. Before discussing today's meeting, uh, let me comment briefly on recent developments in the banking sector. Conditions in that sector have broadly improved since early March, and the U.S. banking system is sound and resilient. <laughs> and of course, next thing you know, banks are crashing again. But hey, the banking system is sound and resilient, he says. And look, folks, I proposed my solution. I said we have to hire Taylor Swift. She gives an endorsement to regional banks. Boom, problem solved. But it appears that my solution did not land with the audience. A lot of you said, Maverick, you're out of your mind. Okay, then I guess we'll have to watch all of these banks blow up. Oh, wait a minute. Your beloved politicians and leaders, they got a new solution in hand. I was watching CNBC today, and I saw the former FDIC chair. I believe her name is Sheila Blair. And usually she is rational. Not today, though. Maybe the open bar idea was a mistake. I don't know, because here's what she said. On this uh, short selling ban, there's analysts. I mean, I just read an analyst note today where he's totally flipping out, talking about how short sellers are driving these banks to zero and we have yeah. to intervene and slap a ban on this again. What would your right. response yeah. be to that uh, well, idea? Yeah, th we did do a more short selling moratorium uh, there. There was the same kind of a problem during the great financial crisis. I do think a lot of this is being driven by short sellers who again are capitalizing on kind of, I think some of the exaggerated characterizations of what's going on. So, uh, you know, that's the SEC's call, but it's important for people, depositors to understand what a bank's share price is, has nothing to do with whether a bank regulator considers it insolvent and thus needs to be closed. A bank capital determination is based on, on your book equity, basically at a high level, whether your assets exceed your liabilities in these banks are, you know, that's okay. Uh, based on the current accounting rules, uh, there, you know, it's not apparent that there's an issue. So don't don't worry when you see a share price tank like that. A lot of it, I think, is being driven by short selling. It doesn't. It may or may not say that the bank is weak, but it doesn't have anything to do with the regulated regulatory determination of whether a bank is insolvent and needs to be closed. Step in uh, again. A lot of this is being driven by fear uh, and not basic fundamentals about how healthy these banks are. So here it is, folks. Forget about bad management practices by these banks. Forget about the lack of oversight by the Fed. Forget about the fact that the SEC is in a coma. And forget about the White House being in, uh, well, another dimension. It's all about the shorts. It's the evil shorts. They're the one behind all of these banks collapsing all over the place. And we must get these shorts. We must ban shorting. We must find these shorts and lock them up in jail. Just like China or Russia. You know, to uh, protect democracy. We have to a little bit of a tyranny. So folks, I thought we should talk about this. So why don't we do that? And here it is. In focus tonight. Ban the shorts. These are the guys who are responsible for all of this chaos. Without the shorts, we will have a beautiful, sound economy. No bank blow-ups, no companies going bust, and a stock market that goes all the way to the moon, baby. And all the horses, because uh, the bank in question today was Pacific Western Bank, also known as PacWest which happens to be located in Beverly Hills, California. And the headline by the New York Times says, PacWest Bank Corp, a mid-sized lender that has been under pressure after three of its larger peers failed this year, issued a statement overnight after its share price suddenly dropped, saying it was continuing to look to sell assets to shore up its finances. Um, wait a minute here. I thought the shorts are the bad ones. The shorts are the one causing all of this uh, problem with banks. Why is PacWest talking about uh, selling assets to shore up finances? What's going on here? Why are we talking about finances? This problem is all about the evil shorts. The breaking news says U.S. federal and state officials are assessing possible market manipulation regarding banking shares. Well, how come PacWest did not talk about that? How come PacWest is talking about finances and all of that stuff when it's all about manipulation? The White House says it is monitoring short-selling pressure on bank stocks. What are they talking about? Here it is. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre on Thursday indicated that the Biden administration is paying attention to the banking sector's stock, stocks. 
all of them. So I guess the White House, they're sitting all day watching the stock market, right? Because that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Anyhow, when she was asked if the administration was considering imposing a stop on short selling of bank stocks, like there was during the 2008 financial crisis, the administration is going to closely monitor the market developments, including the short selling pressure on healthy banks, she said adding that reporters should refer to the Securities and Exchange Commission for information on any possible actions. And the reporters did, but unfortunately the SEC remains in a coma. Not against the short sellers though, we'll talk about that in a minute, but on Wednesday a Reuters report said that the SEC is not currently contemplating a short selling ban, as worries over bank soundness hit share prices. And here it is, short selling comes under fire as regional banks sell off. Without these shorts, these regional banks will be at all-time highs. It's all about the shorts again. SEC Chair Gary Gensler also told Reuters that the SEC is focused on identifying and prosecuting any form of misconduct that might threaten investors, capital information, or markets more broadly. And then Chair Gensler went back to sleep. Reuters reported last month that many hedge funds secured high gains as First Republic, Silicon Valley Bank, and Signature Bank struggled. Oh, these, uh, these greedy, evil shorts. If only somebody with authority can do something about them. While some market participants criticized the practice, others, like nonprofit group Better Markets, listen to this, said that short sellers warned markets about the challenges regional banks were facing. Hey, <laughs> turns out the shorts were warning us ahead of time. There's a problem with regional banks. When the SEC, the FDIC, the Federal Reserve, the White House, the Treasury, all of them failed to spot the problem. The short sellers did the job, they did the research, they looked at the balance sheets and said, hey folks, there's a problem here and we're going to capitalize on that. That's what capitalism really means. Speculation goes both ways, up and down. Not in China though, I mean uh, America. And here it is, these shorts are rolling in cash. Short sellers rake in $1.2 billion in profits as U.S. regional bank stocks suffer. Look at all of these gains, baby. Hundreds of millions of dollars in Truist and PacWest and Zeons, Western Alliance, all of them. The shorts spend a lot of time doing research, looking at these balance sheets. And of course, just like everybody in this country, they're looking for profits. That's their job. The job that the SEC and the regulators don't do. They look at balance sheets, they look at books, they find problems, they find fraud, they capitalize on that. But is it really the shorts behind this problem in regional banks? Are the shorts causing deposits to get out of these banks? Or is it the fact that we have higher interest rates? And these banks are not paying depositors a competitive rate. So they have to take their deposits and go to a money market fund or a treasury bond to chase yields. I guess the shorts are also behind that. And why would the government and the SEC, which is in a coma but always wakes up when it comes to the shorts, not the fraud that happens in gamma squeezes and manipulating the options market and the pre-market session, painting the tape, quote unquote, and manipulate the stock market higher. That's no problem. Because the oligarchs pump, the mom and pops chase, and they dump with their heads, and they walk away rich. The SEC was made in service to these people, the oligarchs. And the banks, of course. You can rob the mom and pops, but you cannot rob companies. You cannot rob banks. Even though the Federal Reserve did this whole investigation about why. Why did Silicon Valley Bank collapse? And they got Vice Chair Barr, who sat for nights at Starbucks, doing his job, studying, doing research. And then he came up with the same conclusion that us YouTubers came up with a few weeks ago. It was a case of bad management combined with interest rates moving higher. Matter of fact, the report says Silicon Valley Bank collapsed because its managers were terrible and regulators dropped the ball. No mention at all in the report about short sellers. It's a case of bad management. And oh, by the way, we the Fed, we f we were busy doing some insider trading. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Not supposed to talk about that either. Even Chair Powell said that the SVB management failed badly and there is a need for changes to bank oversight. No mention at all about short sellers by Powell. So why the ban? You got the geniuses at the Duke School of Business, another business school that I got rejected from. But anyways, you know, because I'm not smart enough, right? Then I went to a public college instead and... Uh, the rest is history. We know who's laughing now. But the geniuses say if there is a right time to ban short selling, it is during a crisis. 
you know, like 2008, right? When the SEC came out in September 2008 and they banned short selling to protect banks and financial institutions. And uh, that was the beginning of the crash right there and then. <laughs> SEC bans shorting, stock market crashes. You know why? Number one, if you're going to ban shorting, you're going to shake out the confidence in the stock market entirely, in these bank stocks altogether. Because the holders are going to say, wait, 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 wait a minute here. Why are they banning shorting right now? Is there something to hide? Number two, a lot of these ratties, a lot of this uh, dip buying is happening by shorts covering. You see, when you short a stock, you borrow whatever shares of whatever stock you're shorting at a certain price. You believe that in time, the share price of this stock that you're borrowing right now will be a lot lower. So you borrow now at the current market price and you sell these shares and in time the stock goes down gets cut in half for example then you buy it back and you give it back to the lender the broker the bank whatever and you pocket the difference so you sell and then you buy later at a lower price and the stock market holds because of this practice the shorts sell then they have to buy back but if you ban the shorts, then it becomes a one-way street. If there's panic in the stock market and the mom and pops, the institutionals are selling, well, who's buying if the shorts are not buying back? We see a crash. In other words, you want to ensure a crash in the stock market? Please go ahead and ban short selling. And of course, at the time, they banned short selling because Lehman Brothers was about to collapse. And there was this war about, oh, we're seeing all of these problems. Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers going down because of the shorts. Not because of bad management or gambling with the client's assets. Here's the CEO of Lehman Brothers back in the day. Take a look. If we get this right today, Papa will squeeze some of those shorts. And squeeze them hard. <laughs> Not that I want to hurt them. Don't get that, please, because that's just not who I am. I am soft, I'm lovable. But what I really want to do is I want to reach in, rip out their heart, and eat it before they die. The 62-year-old Wall Street tycoon raked in nearly a half billion dollars between 2000 and 2007, according to the Oversight Committee. One year alone, earning more than $106 million. Along with all that money came immense homes. This estate in Greenwich, Connecticut, complete with tennis courts and swimming pool. And a $21 million apartment on Park Avenue in New York City. And a vacation spread in Juniper Island, Florida with a postcard perfect view, not to mention a lavish art collection reportedly worth millions. And after all of this, Lehman Brothers collapsed either way, with or without the ban. Some would argue the ban was the culprit for Lehman Brothers collapsing because there was no buyer, there was no bid, it was a free fall. And of course, years later, the Federal Reserve Bank of New York came out and said, market declines. What is accomplished by banning short selling? Question mark. In the report, it says in 2008, U.S. regulators banned the short selling of financial stocks, fearing that the practice was helping to drive the steep drop in U.S. stock prices during the crisis. However, a new look at the effects of such restriction challenges the notion that short sales exacerbate market downturns in this way. The 2008 ban on short sales failed to slow the decline in the price of financial stocks. In fact, Prices fell markedly over the two weeks in which the ban was in effect and stabilized once it was lifted. Bingo! Similarly, following the downgrade of U.S. sovereign credit rating in 2011, another notable period of market stress, stocks subject to short-selling restrictions performed worse than stocks free of such restraints. Even the SEC chief back in the day said that he has regrets over short-selling ban. Cox, this is the former SEC chair, he said that he had some regrets over the drastic action the agency took as markets were hurtling downward in September. For a few weeks, the SEC stopped investors from making bearish bets on financial stocks, the likes of Morgan Stanley and Citigroup. The SEC's Office of Economic Analysis is still evaluating data from the temporary ban on short-selling. Preliminary findings point to several unattended market consequences and side effects caused by the ban, he said. Listen to this. While the actual effects of this temporary action will not be fully understood for many more months, if not years, knowing what we know now, 
I believe on balance, the commission would not do it again. Are you listening, Chair Ginsler, or are you still in a coma? Adding that the costs appear to outweigh the benefits. Less liquidity in the markets was one of the unintended consequences, experts have said. The SEC imposed the temporary ban under intense pressure from the Federal Reserve and the Treasury Department, which insisted it was crucial to the short-term survival of these institutions. A few weeks after the temporary ban was lifted, global markets were again dropping precipitously. U.S. banks were begging the SEC <laughs> to reinstate its short-sale ban, and there was talk of shutting the markets down. Cox said that the chief executive of one major U.S. investment bank even urged suspension of normal trading rules across the entire U.S. market, linking the situation to how Abraham Lincoln suspended habeas corpus during the Civil War. FDR sent Japanese Americans to internment camps during World War II. You see how egotistic these banksters, these assholes are? In good times when the Fed is manipulating the market in their favor for years and years, Oh, they'll take that no problem. But when the tables turn, they start crying wolf and blame it all on the shorts. And they want all of these extraordinary measures to save their asses from their own bad decisions. Steve Forbes says, ban short selling, question mark, a big mistake. What is he talking about? Short selling can actually dampen the overvaluation of particular stocks or other financial assets, thereby helping to curb excessive speculation. When you have these manias in the stock market, to the moon, bruh, diamond hands. Who's there to stop the mania? Who's there to say, hey, <laughs> these assets, they're not going to live to these valuations. And they're going to crash into your heads. Somebody has to do the checking here. Since the SEC is in a coma and the rest of the regulators, whatever they're doing right now, well, the shorts are here to do the job. That's what hedge fund manager John Paulson did in 2007, when he effectively shorted the white-hot subprime mortgage market. That disastrous bubble would have been even bigger and more damaging if Paulson hadn't done what he did. Short selling is no different than the normal selling of shares of any stock. Except that in this case, the investor borrows the shares in the expectations that he can buy them back a lower price when he returns them back to the lender. If instead the stock goes up, our short seller loses. And as institutional short sellers discovered with GameStop and other certain equities, the losses can be savage. In other words, it's not an easy business, folks. The short sellers take an enormous amount of risk to do this job. It's not just for fun comes with unlimited risk and therefore a lot of research a lot of homework has to be done beforehand short sellers are about as popular as hyenas and sharks and make a convenient political target nonetheless congress should keep its hand off here and when the shorts warned the mom and pops about gamestop and the amc mania the meme stock stupidity you're not gonna go to the moon by the moon you mean your asshole uh, the short squeeze is not gonna happen diamond hands is just a propaganda invented by some hedge funds to trap you in they did not listen the mom and pops participated in this stupidity and the shorts backed off they said okay we're not going to participate anymore we're not going to announce any of our shorts anymore we're done and the apes the retail mom and pops wanted to stick it to the man well here's how they stuck it to the man ken griffin citadel made a record 16 billion dollars in profit last year surpassing the greatest trade ever to be one of history's most successful financial plays so the man won at the end of the day and the man used all of this uh, ape money all of this stupidity from the mom and pops and he bought himself a 107 million dollars property in florida the most expensive in miami's history south korea banned short selling and the korean stock market became a hot bid for an insane mania with fraud all over the place fake assets garbage and the mom and pops got sucked in to the point where the regulators in korea were begging the shorts to come back, Baby, come back. because the mom and pops and the institutionals and the predators it's a jungle out there they hype all of these things oh ev revolution ai revolution and they suck in a bunch of mom and pops in and of course they want to ban the short sellers because without the shorts nobody's gonna check them out nobody's gonna say hey mom and pops you gotta be careful here this is a fake rally this is a trap the company's lying about their financials and today dick buff said that bank short sellers are doing a meaningful service what is he talking about the funds and the others who are shorting bank stocks are doing the american public a meaningful service analyst buff said in a note they are winnowing the banking industry and forcing these companies to stabilize their financial statements it is a job that should have been performed by regulators unfortunately the regulators such as the sec 
they remain in the coma, so the shorts have to do the job on their behalf. But this could be cut short if the government issues rules against shorting bank stocks, the Wall Street veteran who has covered the industry for decades said. But of course, the lawyers, the banksters, they're angry. Lawyers at uh, Witch to Lipton, Razzin, Katz, whatever. They urged the commission to impose a 15-day prohibition on short sales, similar to the one placed in 2008 to give time for regulators to work on restoring confidence in markets to digest information. You geniuses. Haven't you learned anything from the last ban in 2008? You ban shorting, these stocks will go bankrupt 100%. They're gonna crash down to zero. And the crooked lawyers, they say absent prompt action, strong banks, yeah, right. Employees, communities, and the American consumer may continue to bear the high cost of unnecessary and unjustified distress. Um, how about bad management? How about high interest rates? Deposits fleeing? None of that matters, right? And by the way, it's not an easy job, like I said. These shorts are shorting all of these banks. They do the homework. Sometimes it plays, sometimes it doesn't. Short sellers lost $64 million on one regional bank that refuses to crash. And this bank is the New York Community Bank Corp. And let's end all of this with some words of wisdom from Jim Cramer. Yep, you heard it right, Jim Cramer. In 2008, Jimbo said, though Mr. Cramer's article did mention last year's repeal of the uptick rule, which made it easier to sell stocks short, he concluded that the real problem was that firms have made themselves vulnerable to negative rumors by short sellers. You simply can't bring down an honest, well kept loss firm, he wrote. It will buy every share from you and take it right out of the bank, back in face. And I say, Amen. Jim Cramer. And with that, folks, we have reached the conclusion of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and you find it informative and entertaining. And if you did, return the favor by subscribing, pressing the like button, notification, you know the deal. But folks, this is all I got for you for tonight. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Good night. The Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious.